Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's pretend for a second that we're all 45 and older. Let's say we're in the real world, not the sports world. Let's say you're in an industry that makes as much money as the National Football League. Let's say you have an employee who's a superstar. In other words, this guy is raking in dollars for your organization, right? It's widely known in the industry that this guy's a superstar. There's no secret here. This guy is one of the most productive people in the industry, and he's on your team. Right? He's generating all kind of revenue. Right? Your industry has something called all industry or all pro. This guy is recognized as an all pro. Right? Let's say this guy has all of that going for him. And it's time to negotiate his next contract. Right? Now, you understand that this guy has the kind of market value where if he hits the open market the contract offers would be multi-year for top dollar right you understand other people your competitors know what this guy is bringing to the table so when you sit down with this guy in the real world not the sports world you understand that it would be incredibly insulting to this guy. You understand you would lose this employee. You would lose him if you say to him, you know what, Joe? We have questions about your character. Right? You've been here delivering the top line for us but we're uneasy about your character right we're uneasy about not your production but your personality who you are as a person so we're gonna exercise our discretion here and only offer you a one-year deal let me just tell you in the real world if you offer a superstar that far less than he can get on the open market you're gonna lose that star Right? I'm surprised that folks offered a one-year deal when they know on the open market they could make, you know, more on a guarantee portion of a multi-year deal. Right? I'm surprised in the National Football League more of these players burdened with what we call colloquially as a franchise tag aren't then you know letting their teams know okay this one-year deal that you're forcing upon me this is the last contract that I signed with this team ever right if you're gonna do this to me right if you're gonna take my market value of a 25 million dollar guarantee and turn it into a one-year deal of 12 million dollars right in an activity that's dangerous where i can get hurt and where superstars like bo jackson got hurt and had careers end if you're going to do this to me after my years of service to this organization my years of top-line performance, top-line productivity, 
then this lack of gratitude on your part is going to convince me that I would be more appreciated across the street. Now, folks, what's happening in Dallas right now in the Des Bryant talks is beyond the pale. Now, I blame the NFL Players Association in part for negotiating this ridiculous deal. But understand, to the Cowboy fans watching this video, everyone knows that Des Bryant has been one of the most productive Cowboys for the last few years. Right? I would say other than Tony Romo. He's probably the most productive Cowboy of the last few years. In the real world, guys like this, when you hear they've entered the building, to negotiate their next deal. You quietly hop on the phone and you tell security, lock all the doors. Let's make sure this guy doesn't leave the building until we've signed him to the new deal. But the rule structure in the NFL is set up where the teams have an incentive, a huge financial incentive to underpay their most prized employees. It's incredible. Worse yet, the teams have an incentive to leak stories about their superstar athletes, to make sure the fan base feels comfortable with the fact that a guy like Des Bryant, who on the open street would get at least a $25 million guarantee, will be receiving less than half of that from the team on a contract, a one-year franchise tag contract that the team unilaterally forces down his throat. So, we're hearing about things Des Bryant supposedly did off the field in 2011. Wait a moment, forgive me. I thought Des Bryant played the 2012 season and was a superstar the 2013 season and was a superstar the 2014 season and was a superstar I thought you accepted the work he performed why are we now getting this slow drip and make no mistake when reporters when journalists come out and say sources tell me that the Cowboys are concerned about this 2011 incident and are using it as a reason not to give him market value. Make no mistake that they're getting their information in part from people inside the organization. Right? So, my point is that the NFL would never get away with this level of buffoonery if the players weren't young men without business experience because of their ages, right? These are guys just graduating from college. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 year olds, right? They're the ones coming under this ridiculous rule structure which people who are a little bit older know couldn't be the industry standard if everyone was 45 or over. In any business, generating the kind of revenue that the National Football League is generating. Right? Simply put, this is ageism. Right? Isn't the attitude here, Des should be feeling fortunate to be getting the millions of dollars that we're giving him because he's from a poor background or his family didn't have money before. Isn't that the attitude? Rather than the market-based argument of we're making this bundle of money, billions, and this guy is one of our most productive employees. Right? If this guy leaves our office and if a free market bidding process starts, this guy's going to make far more 
than the franchise tag we're giving him. Right? So, of course, the NFL has come up with this ruse, and it was agreed upon by the Players Association, incredibly, where the NFL can tell the most productive guys. Here's a one-year deal. You're going to take it, and you're going to like it. Right? And before we give you this one-year deal, we're going to explain to the public that you don't deserve a deal longer than one year or that we're hesitant to give you a deal longer than one year because of problems with your character and because of incidents that you were involved with not last week, not last month, not last year, not the year before that, not the year before that, or the year before that, but the year before, the year before, the year before that. Give me a break. To every player out there who had a great season, who's hearing from their team that they're about to be franchised, I hope you use your own press contacts and release a statement to let everyone know that this will be the last year you play for that team if you can help it, right? Apparently this plantation system is such that a team can franchise you, then turn around the next year and try to, through chicanery, try to franchise you further, right? My point to you is... Franchise players need to use their market power, their freedom of contract, to fight back, right? If you know that your market value, right, the guarantee the market would give you is more than twice what you would make on this one-year franchise deal, you need to publicly make a statement saying, look, I've enjoyed being a Dallas Cowboy. Right? But if this team franchises me here, this will be the last year I play for the Cowboys. Right? Just food for thought. That's how one man sees it. I hope people out there understand, too, that there's a simple reason why these players are making millions of dollars. It's because the business is making millions of dollars, and that's their market value. Right? So if you're really a free market type, you should be cringing at hearing any rule structure where the best workers, the most productive workers, are not only subject to a salary cap, but they're also subject to this franchise tag where a team can say, hey, we know if you walked out the door, someone would offer you a five-year deal. We're going to give you a one-year deal without the financial guarantee that you would have gotten in the multi-year deal. And you're going to smile and you're going to thank us for that one-year deal, even though you have made us tens of millions of dollars. Absurd. I'm throwing a red flag right here on the NFL. I'm throwing a red flag right here on the NFL Players Association. It should never have come to this. How much financial security do these owners need? I thought they already had a salary cap. On top of that, you're going to have a franchise tag on a player? Absurd. What's the rationale for this? Let me hear from you. I know many of you disagree with me. I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of emails saying, teachers make $5, these players make $10, these players are from the hood. These players should be lucky to get what they're getting. My point to you, just from an age perspective, is we all know if these players weren't in their 20s, if these players were in their 40s, they wouldn't be treated like this. If you're in the high-tech industry, good luck convincing the worker who's known in the industry, who's generating big time dollars for your business just imagine if you're one of the most productive people at Google just imagine Google telling you you know what we're not even gonna offer you a multi-year deal 
we're not even going to offer you the guaranteed money you would get if you were, you know, out on the street allowing other employers to bid for you. We're just going to offer you a one-year deal with less guaranteed money that you could get elsewhere. Let me tell you, if you're an employer and you're trying to retain your employees that way, good luck, because it ain't going to work. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me make one final point here. We keep hearing nonsense about the locker room, right? Whenever there's a conversation about players, right? Is he good in the locker room? Is he bad in the locker room, etc.? How are you helping your locker room? When you're treating your best players this way, right? No multi-year deal. We're going to give you a one-year deal. Then we're going to have sources tell the press about problems you had several years ago off the field. Absurd. That's my take. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave it in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.